Whenever I go on late night Wikipedia binges and somehow get from Denzel Curry's discography to an article on a public transit system in a city I've never been to that still hasn't even been built yet, I've always wondered why are Wikipedia profile pictures so bad? Even of high profile celebrities who get cameras shoved in their faces every single waking second of their days. The picture of them that gets plastered right at the top of their own page of one of the most popular websites in the world always seems to be low quality, taken at a bad angle, then pulling a stupid face. Sometimes even photos taken professionally in a studio are always terrible. There was two reasons for that. One, so Wikipedia doesn't get sued by whoever took the photo. So, so Wikipedia always has to have some random bozo go out and take the picture themselves, which is why every actor's profile photo always seems to be at the San Diego Comic Con. Because what are you going to do? Break into a celebrity's house and take a picture that way? No, of course not. And the second reason being the pictures can't be photoshopped in any way. Since bad pictures and Wikipedia seem to go together like a cold beer on a hot summer day, I've tasked myself with finding the worst profile picture on Wikipedia. Which unlucky person has it? And why haven't they been changed yet? I'm going to start with Wikipedia pages that still have their bad profile picture up as of late May 2023. That'll be in the first half. And the second half is going to be reserved for profile pictures that have been changed. While the Wikipedia boffins got their act together eventually for those pictures, the fact that those pictures were uploaded at all deserve a dishonorable mention at least. At the end of the video, I'm going to create a tier list for current profile pictures and a separate tier for past profile pictures. Let's begin. So here's our first contender for the worst Wikipedia profile picture. A humble innkeeper, brewer, and land speculator from the late 1700s to the mid 1800s, Joseph Bloor. Now just imagine that you are somewhere in little old England sometime around the 1800s. You've had a, you've had a long day of traveling and you need somewhere to stop for the night. And you see that face staring back at you. You want a room? We have one room down in the basement that is available for you. Would you like to take it? How are you going to say no? Well, if you say no, you have to explain to the innkeeper that you don't want to be locked down in his basement. And he'll give you that look. And you have to face that look dead in the eyes and explain to him in a calm manner why you don't want to be in his basement. But if you say yes, you're in the basement for night. Tough tits. Good, I take it there are no objections. Here's your room key. Have a nice night. If you're stuck in little old England, well, I've got some good news for you, because he moved to Canada and started a brewery. And it's in Canada where his ghost lays. In fact, Canada loved him so much that they named the street he lived on after him, after he died. Now, where may you find his possibly friendly ghost? In Toronto's Necropolis Cemetery. You know how shit J Station was as a channel when he lived in Toronto and didn't even think to do a don't go to the <laughs> cemetery at 3 a.m. and have a CGI ghost of him just floating around the cemetery where the ghost of him and his definitely deceased, dearly departed girlfriend haunt J Station and his crew take off with the camera equipment and do an ad read for, for Raid Shadow Legends. Now he's obviously not the ugliest guy in the world, but man does this guy look scary. But since the target audience for any kind of weird, scary, supernatural monster porn book or hentai is always women, believe it or not, there was of course one lucky lady who'd found his terrifying presence quite charming because he had a wife and three kids. So for all of you viewers of the female persuasion watching this, are you not charmed yet? Hmm, yes. I have a very special room for you down in my basement. Here are the keys. Have a nice night. But I might be too harsh on Mr. Bloor here. I mean, that's the only photo of him that exists. Why don't I pick a Wikipedia article 
of a person who's had multiple photos taken of them, but still somehow has a terrible picture of their main picture. This is Don Morocco. Just to make this clear, that's not him on the right. That's him down the bottom. It's one thing to have a bad full-on frontal picture, but at least that's a clear picture, right? I, I can't see shit from this one. Not only is this picture poor quality, but one, it shows more than one person in it. Two, the person the article's about is not even in the focus in this picture. And three, it shows the person getting their ass beat. Don Morocco is no random person either. He was in the WWE. He's even in the Professional Wrestling Hall of Fame. These are the images that Google came up with when you Google Don Morocco and, and enter it into Google Images. Sure, most of his videos are copyrighted and you probably can't use them for Wikipedia, but at least they're like high quality professional photos. And there's lots of them, including this one here with his dick fully outlined. That's a much better picture than the, than the one grainy ass, tiny ass photo of him getting his shit beaten. That's the one image you don't want as your main image as a wrestler. The one where you're losing. And in a sport full of flashy controls, pyrotechnics and guys wearing shiny pants, shouldn't photography be like the most important part of a WWE? His other images aren't any better either. The second image of Don Morocco shows him getting his ass beat, and the third one shows an image of Don Morocco getting his ass beat. And those are the only three images on his Wikipedia page. Did he show up to a Wikipedia boffin's house and, and threaten to, to pile drive him or something? I don't know what a Hall of Fame wrestler did to deserve this terrible Wikipedia page. It's the first thing that shows up when you Google Don Morocco. This is his legacy. Whether he likes it or not, I guess. And a few thought the UFC was better at taking photos of their fighters than the whole world wrestling entertainment system. <laughs> then you're dead wrong. After all, the UFC is about the fights, first and foremost. Not the intros with flashing lights, the fireworks going off in the, in the middle of the ring, not the shiny pants. And of course, the UFC has far more fighters than the WWE does, since they don't have to blow their budget on pyrotechnics and script writers. This is the photo they chose for Elliot Spuria, who as of right now is ranked number 9 in the UFC's featherweight division. Like, I get it. Most of the images of Tapuria on the web are probably copyrighted, taken by professional photographers. But how hard is it to just go to one of his fights and take a picture yourself? And most smartphones have like pretty good cameras, even the low end stuff. Have you ever seen one of those true crime docos from like the first episode of the second season about some guy who divorced a girl he's been with since high school, goes to a friend's house, mysteriously just dips out around midnight and then is never seen again? and his body still hasn't been found to this very day. You know when they show the last known photograph taken of him? It's, it's always just him in the background and they always zoom in and, and the picture just looks stupidly blurry and pixelated. This looks like that. This picture would be acceptable if Tapuria was the victim of an unsolved murder case, but no, he's still alive in the UFC, visiting literally every single country on planet Earth to do his job. Get a better photo of him. But if present day UFC fighters are treated poorly on their Wikipedia pages, then the past ones are, are definitely treated a lot worse. Especially if they weren't all that successful. This is the image used for Jonathan Brookins. UFC fighter or part of a group of three who brings around the second most amount of weed and the most amount of stupid novelty bongs to a party? How am I supposed to tell from this picture alone? You thought Don Morocco had a bad when his main image is of him covered in blood getting his ear beaten to a pulp. This is the image they went with for Neil Seary's Wikipedia page. At least Don Morocco was standing up and fighting. This is just a sad image in the makeshift infirmary ward of a gym that hosts both MMA and boxing somewhere in downtown Kansas City. It's not just for WWE and the UFC, sports players in general any athlete generally has a terrible picture f for their Wikipedia page. Here in Australia, where I'm from, our most popular sport is AFL. Being from a smaller country, we didn't really have the best cameras, and this goes for both the video cameras used to capture games and whatever overpriced crap we were stuck with inside our city's one electronic store. 
A lot of the AFL players who played in around the 2000s generally have terrible pictures, if they were lucky enough to have pictures at all. So I guess that Lance Whitnell here should feel honoured that he actually has a picture of him on his Wikipedia page. And this guy's no random nobody. He played over 200 games. I mean, he was the captain of his whole damn side in 2007. Is this the only non-copyrighted picture of him they could find? His face isn't even shown. He's got his back turned to the camera. Well, if you could even call that a camera. The image was probably taken with one of the spare water bottles they have lying around the interchange. But then again, Lance Whitnell retired at around 2007-ish. But another AFL player who did retire around the same time, but he's actually been involved in the media, involved in coaching roles, and even has a whole fucking grandstand in his state's biggest oval, is Mark Rusciuto. Okay, but so the picture captures a pretty damn big milestone of his career. I mean, he's literally being carried off the field by his own teammates. But again, really? Oh yeah, and here's Mark Johnson's photo. Couldn't even get a photo of him where some guy wasn't screaming in the background. Oh, by the way, I'm still not done talking about sports. I'm just going to mention one more sport here. And it's the one sport that theoretically should have the best Wikipedia photos. I mean, it's sport played pretty much entirely in the city. One played in a small arena where it should be easier to get a better shot of the athletes in action. And one sport that's definitely tied itself pretty closely to the entertainment industry. Of all how glitzy and glamorous and polished and shiny it is. I'm talking about the NBA. I mean, you've got a small arena that's under heavy lighting. And it's pretty much the most urban, influencer-centric sport. Can someone please explain to me why this is Stan Van Gundy's picture? I mean, this guy used to be the head coach of the Pelicans. And he's still technically in the NBA today. He's one of the commentators on TNT. Why did Wikipedia choose the one shitty photo of him where he looks like your fat uncle at the family barbecue who burns all the sausages? Even players who recently retired don't have it any better. This is the crop picture they used for Marty Collins. It's not even him at a game, it's not even really him doing anything. Uh, I, I have no words for this picture. At least a picture of Collins shows him on an actual NBA field. Look at what Wikipedia did to Kenny Thomas. This is a guy who's actually been involved in, in media production ever since he retired from the NBA. What media production exactly? Please, Kenny Thomas, just get someone else to take a decent picture of you. That one random photo pulled from a Google reviews of some random ice cream bar who only has a 2 out of 5 average review score on Google reviews, taken by some old guy, isn't gonna cut it. But those people have all retired. Maybe it's a little harder to track them down. So the Wikipedia pictures of players who are currently in the NBA right now should be better, right? Well, they aren't, because this is the picture they've used for Justin Holiday. That is the face of someone who just shat all over the court. And he's trying his damn hardest not to cry in front of all the cool kids to make things worse for him. Oh, by the way, I'm going to make a part two of this video because it's already getting a bit too long. And it's going to be about pictures that used to be the main picture for Wikipedia profiles, but were then changed because they were so terrible. To give you a bit of a teaser, I'm going to show you the picture they used to use for CJ McCollum. I mean, sure they changed it, but the fact that they used it in the first place, just... Why? Athletes can be hard to take pictures of. I mean, okay, they're moving around and stuff, and that's usually the only time you ever get to snap a picture of them. But you know, one class of celebrity who gets paid to attend events, stand still, and get their photo taken of? Actors. And actresses too. Now, of course, since you can't just nab a copyrighted photo and paste it on Wikipedia, most actors get their Wikipedia profile pictures taken whenever they attend Comic Con. That way, regular people can just nab a photo of them if they've got a good enough camera. But you know which actor not on Hollywood's blacklist has a terrible Wikipedia profile picture? Elijah Wood. I could have had the decency to at least take a photo of him when he's at Comic Con. I don't think Mr. Wood himself is too happy with the random photo taken at some hipster dive bar in LA, which he probably went to with a friend, and just pulled random crap out of the prop closet to try and dress like a hipster would. I mean, the, the floral shirt and the little pork pie hat, it, it's an awkward look. It doesn't help that he has one of those expressive faces with bulging eyes. 
because even just him sitting down listening to someone talk makes him naturally look like he got a pretty bad case of food poisoning and he's trying to keep both ends clenched as much as possible to stop himself from puking and shitting all over the floor in front of the cute little hipster girl he's trying to get with. But as far as just plain strange or creepy photos of actors go, this is the photo they've used for Bobby Coleman. Okay, he's a former child actor and he doesn't really do acting nowadays. I haven't got anything else to say other than that's a rape face on a kid who was around 10 years old at the time, which is why they should definitely change it. Honestly, even a cropped, pixely, blurry ass photo would do better than whatever the hell this is. Okay, I've got one more category. This last bit is reserved for historical paintings. Since the camera wasn't invented until like the early 1800s, and cameras weren't widely available until the late 1800s, any kind of ridiculously important or some aristocrat, if, if, it, if they wanted a picture of themselves, they had to go get it painted by someone else. They have to just sit there for hours on end or, or some guy just draws a circle. I, I think sometimes girls could, could do it as well, but it's usually just like some person just drawing them, ha having a look at the person and then painting a little bit, having a good look at them again and then painting again. So theoretically, getting a bad painting of someone, especially a painting that has lasted from like, you know, the 1600s and is still preserved today, like getting a bad painting from that era should be impossible, right? Or maybe the person getting a painting in question was just so ugly that the painter had to do the best they could do and just turned in something that looked like a disaster anyway. I'd imagine that if a painter painted an ugly person accurately, they'd probably be hung, drawn and quartered. So of course, you know, the artist had to take some liberties and, and just touch up the faces a bit to make it look like the, the canvas, but better. So let's see the first contender of, is this a bad painting or is this person just plain ugly? Georges Danton, uh, at least I think that's how it's pronounced. Georges Danton. I'm just going to call him French guy for now. He was one of the leaders of the French Revolution. Apparently, this guy was the main guy who actually overthrew the French monarchy. You definitely wouldn't guess it from this painting, but hey, paintings can be deceiving. I found a few other pictures of him, or oh, well, paintings, and yeah, okay, the guy was pretty ugly. Definitely on the more well fed side, but the main painting they used for his Wikipedia page, it looks like his head is in italics. No, this wasn't a picture converted to text where the italics button was accidentally hit. That is the original painting. According to some guy who actually met Danton, this guy was incredibly tall, just incredibly well built, and he had a voice that shook the halls. Voice so powerful he could tilt space-time continuum and make his head slanted and stretched out slightly. So the French bourgeoisie didn't really get the best paintings. You know, he definitely didn't get the best paintings. King Kamehameha I. Judging by that name alone, you'd expect him to make his hair stand on end, his eyes turn blue and go through the scene and then just do this massive epic attack. But no, this painting makes it look like he accidentally caught his teacher mum and the whole class is laughing at him. Now, I have to give a special mention to this guy. I don't think it's the painter's fault for this one, because, you know, this guy had some incredibly fucked up genetics. I'm talking about King Charles II of Spain. Okay, if you really want to know why inbreeding is bad, well, here's your answer. He pretty much just collapsed the whole Habsburg monarchy just by his existence alone. Okay, you see, the Habsburgs wanted to keep their bloodline as pure as possible. And this was before science was really a thing in the Western world. So to keep the bloodlines pure, they pretty much just all did each other. And from the start of their dynasty in, in, in the 1200s, which I think is the 13th century, I think. Yeah, all of those weird recessive genes buried deep within the family started becoming more and more common and well, it resulted in pretty much the purest specimen of the white race. Yeah, look, 
the guy never stood a chance. And the painter certainly never stood a chance either. Look, this is what happens when your family tree becomes more like a family tumbleweed. On top of being completely impotent and unable to produce any heirs whatsoever, that in his official autopsy report, because he died at the age of 36 because, well, it, it, it's surprising he, he lived that long to be honest. But it was found that his heart was the size of a peppercorn, his body didn't contain a single drop of blood in it, his head was filled with water, his lungs were corroded, his intestines were gangrenous and pretty much completely rotten, and his single testicle was as black as coal. So yeah, don't fuck your sister, or Charles II of Spain will be reincarnated. These are our 17 contestants for the world's worst Wikipedia profile picture. I was going to do like a tier list at the end. I was going to have my own selection for what I think is the worst, like, you know, the next tier. Ones that are only just a slightly worse than the worst ones, and so on and so forth. But I'm going to let you be the judge of that. After all, terribleness is subjective, and the only reasonable scientific measure of terribleness is if the vast majority agrees that something is terrible. Our opinions are pretty much worthless on their own, but as a collective, that's when they mean something. It's not just one person's insane ramblings, turns out two or more people have the same insane ramblings that you do. There's two things I want you to comment down below. One, which one do you think out of a 17 is the worst? And two, if there are any other bad Wikipedia profile pictures. Past, present, doesn't matter. I'm going to do a part two of Wikipedia profile pictures that were changed eventually. So be on the lookout for that. This was a long ass video, I know, but if you made it to the end, thanks for watching. You can get yourself a glass of water now.